Alright guys, so this is going to be the unboxing of the Linear LDC-0850. Um, this is the opener that's going to be going on the big door. New, Brand new in the box. As you can see, this is still sealed, taped up. Um, also, this box is actually pretty good size when they compare it to the LDL-50 box here. Yeah, it's... Uh, bigger so I might need I have to do some uh, redo the back hangs when I put this up if the opener ends up being wider because I think these are a little wider uh, we're gonna dive into this so I got this from eBay listing said it was brand new so it looks like yep this is definitely a brand new opener Everything's still sealed in here, so we've got the, uh, this is the owner's manual, warnings and all that. Curved arm, I am going to use this because this actually comes with good a good arm instead of the cheap skinny Chamberlain arm. See, it's nice and thick. Uh, hardware bag, we've got the... Sensor brackets, header bracket, door bracket. Um, I actually, I'm going to try, uh, here's the sensors, but I am going to try reusing the LiftMaster sensors if they work on it, because I don't really feel like running all new wires. But if I end up having to do that, then I will. We've got a roll of wire, and it looks like little clips to on the rail, it's kind of neat. Wall control. It's got the mounting screws in it. This is the model. Focus. Uh, auto focus, there you go. Model LPWWS. So that's command, light, and then light there, and then you've got like your dimming buttons, and then this flips up. Uh, you've got your lock, that's your Wi-Fi learn, and then, I'm not sure what this is, I'm not sure if this is resync the Wi-Fi or something, I don't really remember, but, that's the wall console, so it's, it's kind of interesting, I've never seen that before. Okay, this is the remote, this is the MTR3, same kind that came with the LDO 50 a straight arm you can see this is a full thick good thick arm I am going to be using this all right yeah, that's definitely a bigger head this is your battery backup looks to be looks to be the same thing as a Chamberlain battery just different branding Looks to be the same thing. And then we've got the opener head. So, packing material telling you don't run the opener a full setting without the door connected. All right. And they, uh, let's see there. they wrap the uh, antenna around the Shaft. Right here is the date, uh, 2017. All right, so looks like we've got on the back here, you've got your up, down, and learn buttons. You've got, oh, thank you. They give you four terminals instead of three. That's nice because they still have screw terminals, which I'm not really a big fan that they use screw terminals still, but yeah. At least this thing will be quiet. And there you go, you can see the linear. This is the one with the Wi-Fi. Um, I don't plan on using the Wi-Fi. Case screw. A little bit loose. I don't know if you can tell. I'll have to tighten that down. Um, so that's the only one that's loose. And then 
me take this light cover off here. Uh, hold on. I don't want to break this. Oh, there we go. So this model has the LEDs on the front. Uh, and let's see what it is. Doesn't say how much lighting it is, but it's an 800 Newton DC motor. Um, I think it was. It was it said it was equivalent to 100 watts. Is how bright these lights are. So. All right. Well, there you go. That is the uh, linear LDCO 850. So yeah, this is wider than the 8550 so um, I'm probably gonna end up having to redo the backings a little bit possibly we'll we'll see because that's right. so let me measure the chassis compared to a faster that is a, a 11 and three quarter inch under 10 inches so uh, maybe not maybe I won't have to end up doing it I'll just be able to angle the back hangs but we'll see but yeah that's the uh, LDCO 850 this thing's gonna look pretty good with the uh, it'll look pretty good on the big door and then I do have the rail for it um, I'm gonna unbox that on Monday when I install this thing and uh, we did get a new keypad for it um, actually let me grab that now and I'll show that to you all right so here's the keypad instructions mounting hardware I love how they give you drywall anchors for something that's going to be mounted outside and then we've got the keypad itself. This one's actually a white one. You can see that it still has the plastic over the logo there. Model LPWKP-G. There's a white and a black version of this one. We went with the white one because it kind of matches the trim a little better. It's got blue LEDs and then you've got your up and down button and then this button will actually control the opener light from the keypad which is actually pretty cool so yeah that's the linear LDC 0850 and once again here's the wall button this is interesting I've never actually seen one of these before I will be curious to see how bright the lights are on this thing because that's the one thing I'm not really that I don't really like is that this only has one light in the front and that there's no motion sensor but eh, we'll see and hopefully this will maybe line up with the holes on the 880. No, actually, I think I will. It might, because the screws are in the same height, and then or the terminals are at the same height, mounting screws are at the same height. So I don't think I'll have to rearrange the wall buttons. Hardware bag. An interesting looking header bracket. I'll get, like I said, I'll get this all opened up on Monday. But for now, there you go. The brand new linear LDC 0850. And I don't, I was told that they don't make these anymore. So this is made in 2017, but I was told they don't make these anymore. So they still make the LDC 0801. It's essentially the same thing as this one. It just doesn't have uh, the Wi Fi. And it comes with a different wall button, and I think that one only has three terminals instead of four. I'm glad to see four screws on the back of this, though. The other thing is you do have to take the cover off of this to install the battery backup, but the case on this looks like it's pretty easy to take off, just four screws. So, All right, well, for now, that's the end of this part. So uh, next part will be unboxing... The rail, well, I guess it'll be taking the 3585 down, and then we'll unbox the rail, get this put together, 
and get it installed and give you my first thoughts on it. So that's it. All right, so we're back out in the garage. Uh, first of all, if there's any background noise, sorry, I brought my little space heater out to at least try to keep it kind of warm because it's like 10 degrees outside. But I've got pretty much everything all laid out here. So I'm just about to do the install and take the 3585 down. I'm gonna unbox this rail and all that. Uh, just a couple things before I get started. So first of all, I know I said in the unboxing video that I was going, that I wasn't going to use these sensors, but I think I actually will because um, Duras AKA garage door openers actually convinced me to do this. I'm going to be redoing all of the wiring. I'm gonna run the wires up for both sensors and the side button over there. And I'm going to run them on top of the rail because if you remember from the unboxing video, I showed you those little clips there are meant to hold the wires onto the rail. So I am gonna do that. Um, also, this is going to be the new side button. It's a Genie Series 2 button. It's just gonna go like right there probably. And uh, since this only comes with one remote, I'm going to be giving my dad one of my clicker remotes to put in the RX-8. I'm just gonna trade it for the 893 that's in there. So this is gonna go in the RX-8. Um, the MTR-3 is gonna go this remote is going to go in the van. I actually, I think I might uh, put the 893 in the van and take the 895 max because I kind of want that thing. But anyway, yeah, so that's just a little overview on what's happening. So I'll unbox this rail for you and then we'll get to the installation. All right, so here's the rail and I'm just going to unbox this. This is the, this is a chain drive rail. Uh, because, first of all, that's all my company had, and I'd rather have a chain drive on the big door anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, this is the model, the Rails model HCT7C, and it looks like it opens up similar to oh, what the hell is What do we got in here? here all right so this is a rail so uh, what I was told by garage door openers to loosen the chain because they pre-tension these too tight which that definitely does feel too tight so um, they actually give you spots to center hang it I actually kind of like that that's nice so um, this is an aluminum rail I believe so it's not steel like the LiftMaster rail, but it's a one-piece T-rail. Um, we do have, this looks like it's a little bit shorter than a LiftMaster front pulley, so I may end up just putting some washers for spacers in there. This is the turnbuckle. This is how you adjust the chain. It looks to be pretty much the same thing as how you adjust the chain on the Genie 1035. You just loosen these two and then you turn this you've got um, unfortunately a plastic trolley but I mean I've I've never really I haven't ever seen these break before so yeah, maybe we'll be okay and then we've got this is the little D shaft thing that slides over the opener Cardboard off of here. So that will slide right over this. And then these are your two holes, which it's interesting. And they must have those in the bolts in the hardware bag somewhere. Yeah, it looks like they do. So I'm going to get this rail bolted on to the opener here. Um, this looks pretty easy to assemble. It's just bolt the rail on and then I'll loosen up that chain some 
I will adjust that chain more once I get it on and see how it runs, but um, I'll just cut this here and then we'll get the rail installed. All right, so I'm gonna have to edit some parts out. And I'm not gonna do a full commentary on installing. I'll just do a time lapse putting it on the ceiling, but anyway, so get this rail installed next. First thing we gotta do is line this up with the D shaft. That's close. There we go. It just slides right on. And then it looks like we have two bolts in the back here, and then two bolts on the rail to hold this thing in. So, sensor brackets, I'll show you how the sensors go, go together when I get to that. And here are the header and door brackets and then the release rope. And then this is all of your, all the installation hardware they give you. So we're gonna open this bag of nuts and bolts. Four of these guys that they look to be the right size. There's no actual, it doesn't look like there's an actual installation manual, just a user manual here. Looks like they gave me the manual in French or something. Hold on. This is not an installation manual, it's just a user manual. I can figure this out. So, oh yeah, these are the right size. So, there's four little screws here. So there's two that go in the back here. And then there's gonna be, and again, I apologize if there's any background noise from the space heater. And then there's gonna be two onto the rail. These are a little tricky to get on because of the chain in there. But... And then I will grab my impact. This one to the opener. Okay, so there's, make sure you get the right size bolts for back here because I grabbed one else too big. Either two must be for the door bracket. Yeah, these ones are a little bit bigger. So, all right, rail is on. All right, it's on solid, so. We're gonna come down and figure out how to adjust this chain. Like I said, it looks to be pretty much the same as the Genie 1035, but. So, just loosen the lock nuts. Oh, okay. Turns out I'm an idiot. 
and this bolt spins the opposite way. This is not, we've got that figured out now. So you just spin this and I'm just loosening it a little bit. We're going to start with this. go from there so tighten them up or turn the lock nuts up to tighten them down to loosen them then vice grips to help keep the chain from twisting as I do this Might be a little too loose, but I'll adjust it later. Once I see how it runs. Alright, so we got that out of the way. Trolley. Okay. Opener's finally assembled. That was hard. Let me get this taken down, I, and I'm going to redo all the wiring, or I'm going to take down all the wiring. I'm going to get the linear up on the ceiling. I am, by the way, going to have to, on these back hangs, flip them 180 degrees to hopefully make it wide, wide enough since the linear is a little bit wider. And then I'm going to show you how the sensors go together and I'll run the wires for the new sensors, new side button wires. This is coming down and then we'll go from there. All right, so now I'm going to figure out how these sensors go together. I think I've got it figured out. Um, like I said, this is my first time doing a linear. So the sensor is the receiving eye. It's got the green and the red. And then this one's going to be your sending eye. It just has a green. The receiving eye is going to go on this side, on this side of the track. Since the sending eye on the 8365 is on that side. So we're going to put the receiving eyes facing away from each other. So first things first, let me, and I'm going to do a little bit of pigtail. So I want this to look neat. So all you got to do is take flathead screwdriver. Just wrap the wire around it like so. Okay. So there we go. There's the sending eye. Got our pigtails. So the way that it looks like this goes together, we've got two brackets, or four brackets, sorry, total. They're all exactly the same, and the way they're designed, one of them will screw to the wall, the other is going to hold the sensor. So, say this is going to screw to the wall, we're going to put it together like this, and then we have a bolt, or a screw, and then a nut for each one, so it allow us to slide this back and forth. And then, it's essentially just going to mount... 
All right, I accidentally cut the video, but essentially it's gonna mount to the wall like that, and I'm actually gonna flip this the other way, so the sharp edge is gonna be pointing in. It's just gonna go right here. Screw in like that. I might have to pre-drill that. But yeah, you're just gonna screw it in. Let me get this pre-drilled and screwed in the rest of the way. And then we'll be right back. All right, so I've got it mounted now. It's nice and solid. And it looks like what you do, you can see how the sensor has this little clip thing in there. And I'll show it to you from the opposite side first. You clip it in, and then it turns, yeah. And then it'll turn. So let me do it the other way. You just kind of line it up. Turn it like that. Now, we need to adjust... So I'm gonna shut the door here. And looks like we can just set it to the minimum. So these are really, really small sensors, and I like the fact, I think I like the fact that they're mounted to the wall a bit better. So now that that's on. That nice and tighten up. And, yeah, that's really all there is to the sensors. So, I'll do the other side, and then I will get all the wiring ran. Get you time lapse of that. All right, we're back. I've actually got the holes pre-drilled already this time, so it's gonna be the same deal. It's gonna mount like this. Another screw. Okay, install the sensor into the bracket. And again, looks like you can get the set minimum depth, which is fine. Tighten it down, and there we have it. Let's make sure we got the clearance for these. Yep, all right, nothing blocking them. So there we go, those are sensors. So now we're gonna get these all wired up and get you time lapse on that. Okay, so I've got the wiring all ran, and I also did a couple of other stuff off camera that I'll show you. So I've got here is the installed sensor on this side, and the installed sensor on this side. I also, you can see I've got. Well, here, I'll show you this. This is real nice, being able to run the wires on top of the rail with those clips. So I've got the wires all ran. I've got the arm and release rope installed. Installed the wall button over here. Use the dimming buttons and then you flip it up. You've got your other features. And then I also installed the keypad. I'll show you that. Oops. Yeah. I guess this gets caught on the turnbuckle. Careful with that. Okay. Here is the keypad. White with blue LEDs. Actually, let me get this linear sticker off of there. There we go. That looks pretty nice. I like the uh, blue lights on it. 
So next what I need to do is I'm going to wire this up. And then I'm also going to install the battery backup and then uh, set limits and force on this thing. All right, so hopefully my phone doesn't fall when I do this, but I've got you set up on the ladder here. So I'm going to hopefully be able to see what I'm doing. Two terminals. Well, let's see, we've got common, wall button, another common, and sensors. So let me just start by loosening up all four of these terminals, and hopefully this opener will be able to handle both the uh, linear button and the genie button at the same time, because the genie button is a lighted button. And I'll try switching on the wires so maybe the LED won't come on or something. They slightly strip the sensor wires on this thing so I guess you can tell, tell them apart the sensor and wall button wires. Let me actually first plug this in and make sure everything's wired up right and that the thing actually powers on. This thing has the LED lights in it too. I don't remember. Beeps, light turns on. Okay. Bright white. Alright, wall button appears to be on. And the button does not light up, but it appears that the other button has power. So I'll test the thing a little bit more once I uh, get the limits set. And that's the antenna. So let's get these moved up here. And now to install the battery backup. So you do need to take the entire cover off to install the battery, which thankfully linear makes it easy. It's just four screws. We'll get this battery installed. Just gotta loosen the screws. I need to take them all the way off. So far, this installation is fine. It's been easy, I've just been taking my time so that I don't make it look neat. And, yeah. So it's good that it powers on, though. And I don't have to take it all the way back down. So, covers off, nice and easy. And actually, let me get you a little bit up close in here. You can see what it looks like inside this opener. Alrighty, so here you can see you've got your motor in there. That is that motor's bigger than the 8550 is. It's actually a 24 volt motor, so it's more powerful too. You can see there is the uh, inspection sticker. Linear actually tests and inspects their openers to make sure they work before they leave the factory. This is where we're going to install the battery backup, which there's three screws to take off. It looks like. Then this kind of drops down, and then logic board, transformer back in there. So, all right, that's what we got inside this. And let me take this light color off so I can show you the LEDs on the front. There you go, there are the LEDs. A model LDCO 850. Light lens back on. There we go. So I'm going to get the battery backup installed on this opener. And then uh, we're going to set limits and test it out for the first time. Okay, so time to install the battery. And like I said, the battery looks to be the exact same thing as a Lookmaster battery. Um, See, it is still 12 volts, so I guess it just uses half the half current when it's running in battery mode. So let's see if they made it easy to install the batteries. Let's find the screwdriver again. So like I said, it looks like we got three screws that need to come off. Looks like the cover might be a little bit annoying to have to put 
back on. Sorry if I'm getting in the way here. Yeah, this looks like it might be slightly annoying to do this, but just screw. I think this is going to be slightly annoying to do that. Oh look, I found it. Okay, well let's hope I don't do that again. Uh, I'm fly it off. Okay, so from the looks of it, you're supposed to put the battery in the box and then connect the wires or... Oh, actually okay. So you're supposed to put the battery in and then you'll you can see the battery. See if you can see, I hope you can see this. The battery is going to slide in like this, and then you'll connect those two terminals. All right, now comes the fun part. Let's see if I can get this back on without dropping it, because that would be bad if I drop this thing with the battery installed. There we go. Alright, so yeah, this is definitely proving to be the worst part of doing this, installing the battery. It's red to red and black to black. Um, okay, hold on. There we go. And then red. battery in actually powers on right away. Interesting. And then we'll put the cover back on. There we go. So that's on. Let's make sure I'm still recording. Okay. So let's set the limits. So it says here. Press and hold either the up or the down button to set the limits. And press and hold the learn button at the same time. Okay, so we can now set the limit. Alright, let's set the limits. the learn button. Okay. And then you push and hold. 
Oh, whoops, I accidentally pushed the worm button. Um, don't push the worm on that way. Oops. I meant to program the middle button. So I'm glad that you can delete individual remotes. Alright, now let's program the middle button. Okay, now let's set the down part. So push and hold the down button and push and hold the worm button at the same time. And we can now set the down button. Limits have been set. Let me tighten this machine up just a little bit because All right, I'll put you on pause. I'll tighten the chain, and then we'll do the rest of the stuff. All right. So the chain's been tightened, so, and according to the manual, to set the force, you got to run it four cycles. So let's do that. Let's hear this thing full cycle for the first time. Listen to that. That is so quiet. Let's run that down. Yeah, I can actually hear that. I need to lube my cables. Oop, I gotta adjust those wires. Let's run it again. And let's use the wall button. Does buzz a little bit at the bottom, but that's just because the uh, door is heavy on the glass. Just listen to how quiet that is, though. Back down. It does kind of slap a little bit, but it's because of the bottom section. Let's see if this button works. There we go, side button works. So quiet. I'll adjust that down limit if I need to, but I think it'll be all right. Let's get the door to seal fully. Yep, we got a nice seal. All right, let's give this one more cycle to set the force. You should just listen to that though. It's nice having a quiet door after having that 8550 on here for so many years. All right, so there you have it. Force has been set. So what I'm gonna do next is uh, I'm gonna get remotes and stuff programmed. So I have, like I said, this clicker is gonna go in the RX-8. And I'm going to set this to the linear. This is going to program to the 8365. So let me actually... I'm going to clear the memory on the 83. So I can redo remotes on it.
So, let's take this. The second button's actually never been further than anything before. Program that keypad. I'm not going to show you my code. Okay. I know I got to get the rest of these remotes here. I guess just one more remote. Actually, two more remotes. Sorry, gotta get two 893 LMs, and then I'm gonna take the 893 Max. Remote. Set the first button. Since we no longer have a uh, security 2.0 opener on the big door. Come on. So our remotes have all been programmed to the 8365. Let me shut that. Okay. And let's get the remote and keypad programmed to the linear. Let's push the Learn button. Okay. So this is going to be my dad's remote, the clicker. And let's program that keypad when we're at it. I'm not going to show you my code. Okay. And then the other thing I'll show you, you can actually control the light from the keypad, which is pretty cool. And let's test the keypad. Appears to work. That thing is so quiet. Okay, and then we'll do a sensor and force test. Walk under the door. It was real slow there, but. I think beeps instead of just flashing the lights. I don't know why I don't think that. All right, and we'll do a force test. Works well. All right, and then here's the wall button. So it looks like this is your light, and then you can dim it to that max brightness already. Huh? That's actually pretty cool. I've never seen that before. You can actually dim that light, and then the middle button is your Wi-Fi learn. That's your Wi-Fi reload. I don't really plan on using the Wi-Fi. Then you have the lock, which I think you gotta hold it. There we go. Oops. Accidentally hit the button, I guess. And let's see what it does when it's locked.
Okay, he must still let them close the door but not open it. Yep, all right. All right, well, yeah. I'm going to unlock. Push it again. Or do you even have to hold it? Oh, nope, you don't. Okay. Well, there you go. That's the linear model LDCO850. Uh, that's the installation and unboxing and kind of a review on it. So, first impression, I love it. And we'll see as time goes by if I continue to like it, if this thing continues to sound like it should. So, there you go. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, we'll see you guys in the next one. I almost forgot one thing. We gotta do a battery backup test. See how it runs in battery mode. Oh, no way the battery is bad on it. Well, how many beeps was that? Seven beeps, uh, seven flashes. Encoder has detected an error. Um, is this thing running? Door's running fine. Does it not like battery backup mode? Or what? Three and then okay now it's giving me oh battery's just low okay well we gotta wait for it to charge and then I'll do a battery test so that's good to know